Let's unpack what we can expect in the economic week ahead. I'm joined in Cape Town now by Peter Worthington. He's a senior economist at Barclays Africa. Peter, thanks for joining us today. When we take a look at the overall economic climate in South Africa, we've got the poor GDP numbers, mining and manufacturing, no doubt taking a slump. It's the ongoing strikes as well in the sector. And talk that we could be on the brink of a recession. Now, some industry heads at Treasury tend to disagree, but what's your view on this perspective? Look, I think it's certainly arithmetically possible that we could have a recession which is defined as two successive quarters of negative GDP growth. And we've always already had one quarter, Q1. The question for quarter two uh, is still to play out in the data. And you mentioned the mining and manufacturing production data, which are due out this week for the month of April. They will be the first hard activity prints for Q2, so the first real indication of what the growth momentum is going to be. But we've already seen from some other indicators, like the very weak PMI readings and weak car sales data that we haven't started off the quarter on a strong footing. Well, that's a bit uh, concerning, uh, but we're also expecting the business confidence index due out later on this week. I take it already, judging by the levels of confidence that you and I are feeling or lack thereof, it does certainly give an indication as to what that reading will tell us later on this week. I think that's right. I mean, we expect it to track somewhere around the 40 level, which is well below 50, that is the neutral level. So we're, we're deeply in pessimism territory here. And I think some of the things that are bothering businesses right now are problems that are not uh, going to go away very quickly. One would be the labor market unrest that you talked about. Another would be the um, electricity shortages, which continue to hobble industrial production when ESCOM has to uh, cut back electricity supply to the big energy intensive users. So those are, are two really critical problems that industry is suffering with right now and one of the reasons why business may not be feeling terribly optimistic. Then this shouldn't fare well for South Africa's uh, standing against rating agencies like SMP and Moody's. Would you to uh, look at our ratings once again this week? Your expectations, Peter, as to how that might fare? Yes, both uh, Fitch, uh, not Moody's, but Fitch and S&P are due oh. to announce their biannual rating reviews uh, on Friday. I believe S&P is actually going to announce after hours. I'm not quite sure when Fitch uh, plans to make its announcement. But we think there is a reasonable probability that there is going to be some negative rating action. And our call is that we think that S&P is going to downgrade the local currency rating currently at A- minus to triple B+, plus to bring it more into line with its foreign currency rating. Uh, and that we may see Fitch, which has South Africa on a stable outlook, change the outlook from stable to negative. But look, it could go either way. I mean, I think there's a case to be made as well for the rating agencies, perhaps just taking a little more time to assess. Uh, they'll certainly want to see what the new government uh, or the new administration does. Uh, and I think they'll also be very curious to see what the new administration lays out during the medium-term budget policy statement in October. So uh, there is a case that maybe they'll wait until the end of the year. But as I say, we think for the local currency rating for S&P, maybe a one-notch downgrade and a change in the outlook for Fitch. Peter, keeping with those sentiments, what's uh, regarding the worst-case scenario, what are the consequences there of perhaps more volatility in our local currency and a lack of foreign direct investment maybe? I don't think foreign direct investment pays a great deal of attention to what the credit ratings are. Um, but we could see some price impact uh, showing up in the currency and bond yields. But some of it has already likely been priced in. We have seen the currency weaken a little bit recently. We've also seen uh, credit default swap spreads widen out. That's an indication that the market is, is, is anticipating some negative action on the ratings. Um, so a lot has been priced in, but I think the market is probably looking at sort of modest actions like I've just laid out. If we got something which was more uh, extreme, say a two-notch downgrade by S&P or an actual downgrade by Fitch or changes in their foreign currency as opposed to local currency ratings, then I think we could expect to see a little bit more um, sell-off in the market. Peter, just to close off with, it's interesting that you mentioned the new administration in Cabinet. Uh, one such new person is Nkang Kanene, now the current financial finance minister of South Africa. When it comes to the midterm budget, if you had any words of advice for him as to what he can do to stimulate economic growth, what would they be? 
Well, unfortunately, I don't think it's entirely within the remit of the uh, Treasury here. I think the issues that are hobbling growth really m lie much more with, let's say, Ministry of Labor or Ministry of Public Enterprises. But mm. for Nene, what I would suggest is just stick to the course of fiscal discipline. Don't think that you can pump prime the economy uh, into some higher growth path at this stage. We actually have had a very significant buildup of public debt, and now is the time to show to investors and to the rating agencies that you can actually actually deliver some fiscal consolidation even if growth continues to underperform your hopes uh, and that would be my advice for him.